Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we will be moving ahead with our second panel discussion of the day, which will be on integrated marketing and digital acceleration that will change the future of communication and challenges that it poses. Let's have a round of applause while I welcome our session chair for the panel discussion, Mr. Ahmed Nakwi, CEO and co-founder Gozu. A very warm welcome to you. Mr. Nakwi will introduce you to our panelists and take you forward. Very warm Great. Welcome. Lovely. Thank you so much. A very good afternoon to everyone here. And uh, what I'm really kicked about today is that our topic of discussion is one of the most important points, not just for marketing departments, but for the entire C-suite in brands and businesses. And what I'm even more kicked about is that to discuss it, have some of the most amazing people of this industry to come and share some of their secrets and some of their tips and tricks. Right. So without further ado, let me quickly welcome uh, Mr. Santosh here, the Vice President, Sales and Marketing, and also the member of leadership team at Mercedes Benz. He has over two years of experience in the automobile industry across sales, marketing, customer service, corporate affairs, and he's also been instrumental in making service differentiator as a key parameter to achieving service excellence and customer loyalty. Welcome, Santosh, to the panel. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Great. Next up, we have Hitesh Singla, who's an AGM marketer for KAI Group. He has over two decades of experience transforming businesses and innovations across industry, and he's worked across various sectors. Welcome, Hitesh, to the panel. Thank you, uh, Ahmed. Next up, we have the Chief Marketing and Digital Officer for Payback India, who has over 22 years of experience in loyalty, digital marketing, and payments. I would love to welcome Mr. Ramakant Khandelwal to the panel. Thanks, Ahmed. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Next up, someone who started his career as a motorcycle designer and pivoted building businesses, uh, the entire design global business for Tata LXC, and then to leading strategy and marketing for the company, Nitin Pai, who is the Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Tata LXC. Welcome to the panel. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, we have Nitin with us now. Good afternoon. Pleasure. And uh, our last panelist, but not the least, is the Chief Marketing Officer for Air Asia, where he is in charge of marketing, PR, corporate communication, e commerce, ancillary revenues, catering operations, and sustainability. And he has a, had a rich experience right from working on exciting projects like Tata Nano to Ginger Hotels to you know, leading marketing for Titan UK. As well as you know, you know, innovating and coming up with offerings like Vivanta brand, which has now become a Harvard case study. Would love to welcome Siddhartha Kutalia to the panel. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here with all of you. Great. Welcome everyone. See, over the last one year, you know, we have seen life as we know it change completely, right? And bigger picture, but the smaller things, and these smaller things are all led by how our audiences have changed their behavior, the way they shop, the way they consume content, the way they transact. And as marketers, we've been using the phrase digital acceleration as a blanket term for what we are witnessing. What is really fascinating are the small nuances. And that's what to get in and dig in to your minds with your experience to possibly make the audience much richer. So before I deep dive into the entire discussion, I just a friendly reminder to the audience, please do keep questions coming big or small, smart or not, right? Uh, if you never ask, you will never know. This is a great opportunity to keep the minds of our rich panelists here. Right? With that, let me now straight dive in into one industry which has seen a lot of uh, flux, a lot of change, a lot of restrictions, which is a travel and hospitality industry. And let me get Siddhartha into the picture here, right? So that, how has the audience behavior changed in the past 12 months and how has digital acceleration really helped with that? So it's very interesting. We've obviously been watching this quite closely. I would say that it's not just the behavior, but it's the demographics itself of the audience that have changed. Um, we've seen, for example, a change in the demographics becoming decidedly younger immediately after the lockdown uh, in May and more diverse. And that has brought own behavioral changes uh, with that audience. Younger consumers tend to be more digital. They also uh, tend to be more open to new experiences and new service offerings. We've seen that their resilience to the pandemic has been higher. They have been more optimistic about um, coming out of it 
than many of the other audiences. At the same time, the purpose of travel has also changed significantly. So there has been obviously a significant, and it remains muted, business travel and corporate travel remains very much muted. Um, visiting friends and family continued to be quite high, but the nature of that friends and family visit moved from festive occasions to actually being permanently with friends and family and moving from between hometowns and traditional office towns. Um, and at the same time, the massive reduction in leisure or holiday travel in the immediate aftermath of the lockdown has actually resulted in a significant pent up demand, especially among these younger consumers. And now this has enabled us to really change the way and the dynamics in which we deal with consumers. To take one of the examples of, of digital, right? the fact that it's a younger audience that is more open to digital service offerings or interacting on the engaging on their apps has enabled simple things like web check-in percentages to go over threefold to over 90 percent while most traditionally uh, you know corporate audiences etc used to do counter check-in uh, now over 90 percent of the people are doing web check-in which means the amount of personalization that you can do the amount of data that you can gather prior to the individual's uh, actual travel has increased significantly we've been able to introduce new uh, biometric boarding processes with bangalore international airport for example using your face as your as your boarding pass We've offered new services in the entire travel ecosystem, like um, baggage delivery services from your airport to your home with, with Flyport or, or starting new partnerships like with Taj Hotels or with Avis, etc. Because consumers are now seeing the travel experience as one holistic experience and not broken down into the various, this is how I will travel to the airport, within the airport, in the flight, etc. So there's been a lot of change in, in that sense that we have witnessed. And I think a lot of it is here uh, to continue. And okay. this is in fact the new novel. It's that important you mentioned about the pent up demand and those into the picture. Because, Santosh, for your industry, you know, the, when the lockdown happened, everyone is tired, no one is thinking about driving or going out. But in recent times, how has the YOLO mindset of audiences really impacted your industry? And have you seen this behavioral change, Kim? Can we have Santosh? Uh, I think Santosh dropped off for a okay. while. Can so we just can uh, Santosh quickly join in? And in the meantime, Hitesh, why don't you, you know, share your perspectives? Because one of your passion is gauging the pulse of consumers of today. What is your perspective on the entire? Uh, definitely, Anwar. Uh, it has been a mixed bag of time. And we had seen a big change in the behavior of uh, consumers. And actually, the consumption pattern has changed, whether it is goods, services, or even the communication for that matter. Because communication is the very baseline of uh, whatever we do as a marketeer. What we believe is that there has been a uh, huge exposure of, to the consumers just because of the digital acceleration. And we think that there is fueled by basically three factors. The first is the economic downturn, which is leading to back to basic for the consumers. Second most important is the preference shift in terms of what whatever is giving them higher value, safety and convenience is, uh, is moving up the ladder of the preferences. Just to give you an idea that Vikai is a 113 years old Japanese organization who are manufacturers of razors, uh, houseware goods and there's a lot of uh, big consumer rate, we would have at least 10,000 SKUs. One of our category is women's razor and it has gone tremendous, it has grown tremendously in last 12 months. And the reason is uh, something very different. Now women has actually uh, preferred to use razor at home instead of going to salon because of this pandemic and all that stuff. And this is a very good example of change of consumer buying behavior because they had preferred safety and their concern for all the uh, concern for basically you can say exposure or their or their own himself their self uh, basically that how they can take care of themselves during this pandemic and this has actually given a boost because of uh, this has been a basic factor for a boost because of the digital exposure now they can see the product what they want they can offer the uh, best they can get the best price what exactly is going on in the market and they can actually purchase it from anywhere they want so the exposure has given a change to the preference and the buying behavior 
and the third most important thing is the importance of options that now consumers have a lot of options to choose earlier the buying behavior was that you go to a shop or a consumer go to a shop whatever eat to 10 products which are there on the shelf you pick and choose from them but today the world is on your shelf so you can pick and choose whatever you want at your convenience so we think that there has been a drastic change in the behavior of the consumer how they are picking and choosing of the products and this has been boosted because of all the digital exposure correct correct great this interesting you mentioned that right and since we goes back on i would love to get his perspectives santosh siddharth siddharth also mentioned about pent up demand right and for your industry the initial period of last year was someone which wasn't you know people are not driving going out but the yolo mindset of audiences and the pent up demand has it really led to change of your audience behavior and you think this change is here to stay now no exactly actually uh, we were so you know uh, and these are all entry level cars and stuff they are all expensive cars and we see a great demand uh, in fact right now question is the demand is more than supply and then no could have any that's that's lovely to hear i think music to our ears and you know who would have thought a few years back that people would be buying luxury cars online and i feel that if there's someone to be blamed or rather to given credit for is also the digital payments industry so let me get ramakant into the picture and uh, ramakant uh, you know how according to you that this behavioral change of using digital payment how is that really impacted impacted marketing and as marketing as it's itself evolved in the past 12 months according to you ramakant you are actually on mute so we can't hear you yeah can you hear me now perfect yeah so uh, this evolution has been in the making for quite a long time and i would say that pandemic has probably only forced customers to try this out so the people who had been the early uh, you know adopters of this uh, or or companies that were rolling out these solutions were very confident that uh, you know if consumers were to try this out it's quite likely that they are going to like the experience the convenience of it okay and they will uh, become loyal customers uh there were a lot of fencers and you know they were not trying it out uh but pandemic forced because there was probably you know in many industries uh, and in payments uh, there were probably no other options at one time uh, i mean during the course of the pandemic uh let me also you know take this a bit forward because our company is not uh, only focused on digital payments but you know we run a multi channel uh, and multi partner loyalty program so uh 
the way we have looked at this whole industry is that uh, you know the the marketing industry the digital marketing industry is that uh, every company from a business perspective uh, probably is looking at you know uh, two things they want more new customers and they want to retain their existing customers right and digital marketing is coming in as a performance marketing which is making things much more measurable and and by no means do i recommend that digital marketing is the only marketing channel that we should adopt but digital marketing as a performance marketing uh, gives you all the right metrics to first of all manipulate and you know customize your uh, marketing approach the communication approach at the same time you look at the entire funnel in terms of how uh, you know your approach is performing and uh, you know i'm i'm taking cue from uh, some of the earlier uh, you know points mentioned by siddharth and santosh and ritesh uh, so we have looked at in terms of utilizing the digital marketing platform we have looked at in terms of building three aspects to the whole communication first is personalization okay digital marketing is very closely linked to data i mean if you don't have rich data you don't have data analytics frankly there's not much uh, you know uh, much length that you can cover uh, so personalization understanding of your existing customers understanding of the prospective customers and then creating the cohorts so that you are talking to them uh, in a in a in a manner that is going to you know get them interested right so personalization is a key second is relevance i mean there are so many hooks that are available today uh, customer behavior hooks uh, and we have to use that to figure out that what is it that is relevant to a particular cohort uh, and let's focus on that versus you know doing everything for everyone and in the end doing nothing for no one right so relevance is the second part and third is the real time aspect of digital marketing i mean you launch a campaign now in half an hour you will actually start seeing the comparative performance of this campaign versus your uh, let us say business case versus your past performance versus your other hypothesis right so uh, so we have been working for our captive businesses as well as for our partnerships keeping these things in focus that how can we build more of personalization more of relevance and how can we uh, react to things in almost a near real time manner that's how i would put it and great so makan interesting you mentioned that um, and some very valuable points there to make note of i uh, would love nitin's perspective nitin you have worked with so many different brands Uh, you know, across industries, and you know, would you agree with what Ramakant is saying in terms of digital marketing being more geared towards performance marketing? And is that the way most brands and marketers are looking at it? And how you're really seeing marketing evolve? Right. Um, again, of course, I have to acknowledge that uh, I operate in a B two B business, right? And we are in technology and design services sales, so which means that. i sell the idea first and then i win a deal and then i execute on the deal uh, unlike a product that is then is available and then you're only trying to sell that so for us the biggest challenge is that we are a direct sales right? so we are b2b we are direct sales we are global so 90% of our revenues come from outside the country and what do you do when the world has changed to a point where your customers are not meeting you anymore they can't and two your business is based on trust the ability to meet people develop a relationship build build that confidence and then be able to win a deal and execute right so on one hand i would say yes we have pivoted significantly digitally so marketing has become digital but marketing has actually become more sales now because it is actually helping the sales organization overcome this aspect of the fact that they cannot meet people anymore now how do you manage that experience right how do you bring the company to the customer in many ways i would say that would be the challenge of santosh too how do you bring what you do to the room of the consumer rather than him going to a showroom so for us i think marketing has changed to one a lot more authentic sharp short messaging to a lot more advocacy based because if you want to build trust the best way to build trust is to have somebody else talk about it to you and somebody who has been there before and three we are trying to augment what we would have as otherwise human touch with virtual tours for example we have virtual tours of our office now to just tell them look this is where people work this is how we do things and so on and lastly i think also the control of the environment right? uh, 
Uh, and I'll give you a simple example, right? Just look at the six of us today. If we were to do this live event, I'm wondering how our dress code would have been different. Totally, totally. <laughs> Even two. I wouldn't be wearing shorts below my t-shirt. <laughs> the balance between authenticity and the fact that you look your virtual still. And how do you bring that balance? I think it's a big, big challenge in terms of uh, this whole, whole driving of experience in the sales and marketing business. Uh, that's a challenge that we're actually living through now. Right? Uh, yeah. that's no, that that's a very interesting point of view. Uh, you know, look at uh, Hitesh's perspective on this. Hitesh, the line between digital, mainline, all blurred, everything getting more integrated, possibly more dribble also in time to come. What is your perspective on this entire, uh, you know, tectonic shift that is happening in market? Um, what I feel is that uh, uh, the way we are moving, definitely digital will take a lead. But as of now, uh, being present in both online and offline and both contributing to a substantial business share, I think there is a need to maintain a balance, a fine balance between all the platforms we are getting. Because the way moving forward is that to first get the consumer about our product uh, perspective, our business perspective, and then from a digital uh, from an offline perspective, when they reach to the shelf, when they reach to the online stores, we need to excite them about the product. So there has to be a very, very good balance and dynamic balance because we cannot maintain the same balance over a period of time. So we need to be very, we need to be changing very fast in terms of our communication, but still maintaining the same thought process that whatever consumer has seen on the digital platform, actually that thing is transformed on the actual physical space. So I think as of now, what we are believing is that a very fine balance has to be maintained moving forward, at least for next eight or 10 months or maybe a year or so moving forward. Until unless we see that whether it was this digital boom is still in its uh, initial phases or it has getting into some sh uh, sort of shape. So it would be very important to observe very keenly how we are moving forward on this platform and technology is supporting us. Correct. It is why we while we watch it very keenly, observe it, and maintain this fine balance. Do you have one mantra for aspiring marketers, or one mantra to abide by? Yeah. And uh, what I what I will say, or as a brand, we believe is that we need to create value for the consumer. And after we have created value for the consumer, let's leave it for them to decide. Because in the given platform, if we are binding or we are trying to catch a consumer, it would be difficult. So we give them a value proposition that, okay, this is the way our brand is creating the value. Then we leave it up to you, whether you choose this, this or that, whatever you decide, it is your option or your choice. So this is what I feel is the way forward should be for the consumer. So, so don't catch, but give them value, right? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for that, Hitesh. Hitesh, I know you have a hard stop and we'll continue our discussion now. And let me get Ramakant. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and making this. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank Cheers, you. Sir. Thank you. Lovely. Hey, Ramakant, uh, Hitesh did mention about the fine line, the fine balance. We have to observe the space keenly. You mentioned about the benefits of digital. But while adopting a digital first strategy, do you also think there are some challenges? or some red flags that a brand or a marketer should be careful about? So, uh, you know, in terms of challenges, uh, the uh, the infrastructure has to be created in the organization. The, I would say actually it starts with a digital vision because uh, it, it has to be bought right at the topmost level and it requires a lot of infrastructure deployment. For example, you know, you need to have the platforms uh, uh, that will start talking uh, in a harmonious manner. Uh, you know, when we are talking of personalization, we are essentially saying that we understand the consumer uh, and we will be able to do things which are right by this customer, more interesting for the customer. Now, understanding the customer means that all the touch points where customer has left some footprints, we need to be able to get it together. Okay, we have to make it more actionable. The insights are available in the organization. They are mostly available in silos. We have to bring it together 
and that's what the integrated you know uh, approach is it's not just the integrated communication but even the the back end of it has to be uh, you know fully done and then we uh, uh, you know the out, outward of it is the communication which is going out through multiple channels right so infrastructure the vision and that will help us get the right investments within the organization the bringing uh, together of all the teams uh, that is one part uh, the challenges which are going to come and i think they are already being discussed in some form or the other uh, we are really talking about making this more effective by understanding the customer okay which means we are collecting a lot of data about the customers uh, we will run into privacy issues if we are not uh, you know handling it uh, in the in the in a transparent man manner by taking customer consent wherever it is required because we are going to use if if we need to personalize we need to first tell the customers that it is being done for all the right reasons okay that that our objective as marketers is to make things interesting and easy for them and that's why we are collecting this data and we are going to use this data to benefit them in the end right so privacy is is definitely one thing that we have to observe and and adopt in our approach the the last thing you know i would say is that uh sometimes we just get uh, over we try to go overboard and the level of communication so if, if you search for a hotel room in masuri you know in one of the travel websites and you will and go to internet and everywhere you will see the same thing you have probably gone to masuri and come back and you might still see the same thing in some other places i think uh, you know these kind of behaviors have to be controlled and while this is a dissonance that may not directly hurt your business but some other places it can if you are sending too much of app notification customers are going to uninstall and in our business and again you know it is all through learning over the decade that we know that we have to control uh, you have to monitor things like the unsubscription rates of your emails your app uninstall rate right uh, and sorry one last point uh, digital is a lot about data but i think you know the rational part of marketing sometimes takes over the emotional part and we as marketing leaders we can never afford to ignore the emotional aspect of marketing when there are so many advertisements you see where the emotion strikes such a chord and some of these things become really viral you know for the right reasons i think uh, digital you know makes you very rational in every time you only want to see the funnel you want to see the conversion rates uh sometimes we tend to forget the emotional aspect right right so ramakan interesting you mentioned that because there has to be a good blend of creativity as well as performance to really make a cohesive uh, marketing plan and those creative aspect would ultimately lead to those emotional connect which will help in the long term for brand so it's important point that you make there uh you know but as they say that uh, with so much of action happening so many uh, trends changing so many behaviors changing the proof of the pudding is in the eating of it and for learning it is in the doing of it right so let me get santosh into the picture and ask you santosh that uh, as an iconic brand what kind of uh, campaigns have some of these techniques of digital uh, been leveraged by your brand and is there any learning from that so for sure i think uh, what we have seen in these times now with the faster adoption to digital uh, uh, we first of all this thing that we are seeing is the way consumers look at data you know we did some research and uh, consumers were more than willing to give data to a brand like mercedes benz than to some e-commerce website so that was positive but other side we felt a huge responsibility that we are collecting data not only via marketing but you know today with all our connected how we can uh, collect data transparently how to use them responsibly and how the, how much we can make the consent explicit i think it's a huge responsibility when you now we are handling so much of data with us and the way we communicate with our customers what do we do so i think there the needs to be a very strong compliance management system when it comes to data uh, data protection also usage of data sure. and these are some other aspects which are emerging when it comes to marketing in terms of campaigns uh, i think this is a prerequisite uh even when we discuss with our agency partners uh, when we look at integrated marketing uh, how can we uh, you know look at the overall piece uh, right from uh, and, and it is no longer just a buzzword i think i think the starting point of any campaign plan is uh, on this omni channel experience on a free digital experience 
and uh, I think that that's the biggest the brief that I have seen in the past 12 to 18 months from where it used to be vertical led or it used to be um, you know mostly uh, the conventional piece the the PR piece and maybe also digital used to be one of the uh, separate pillar assets but today. Uh, the key is uh, how much of customer journey you can ensure you are able to give a seamless experience uh, right from the time he visits, uh, you know, on a search result till the time he even buys a car and then even the post car purchase because we get continue to get a lot of data from the car. How can we make it to not to push things to him or sell to the consumer, but how can his life be made simpler using the data that he has given us consent to use and do it. So I think that's a fundamental change in our industry that we are seeing now. Emergence of data, uh, you know, getting for digital marketing as well as uh, customer experience as such. Since you mentioned a lot about data, uh, you know, we have Siddhartha on the panel, whom I'm sure has a lot of data to work with and to play around with every single day with so much hap action happening and possibly also belonging to an industry where, uh, you know, you know, the, the behavior has changed so drastically as Siddhartha, you mentioned about uh, the way people are checking in now. The, the way people are thinking about traveling, right? So is there something that you have done to make your brand uh, more closer to your uh, audiences in the past 12 months? Any campaigns, any innovation? You mentioned about the biometric thing that has been installed. But is there any other thing that you have done which you have to share? Any lessons from that? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot that we did going back to the basic tenets of, of marketing, which is follow the consumer and follow what their sentiment is, right? So when we entered this we broke it down into what we thought and turned out actually to be a three-phase strategy we said there's going to be the initial phase right which was isolation uh, so we said we, we we will first look at response then recovery and then rejuvenation as a category and um, in the response phase we're really responding to the sense of isolation that people were feeling in the course of the lockdown the significant travel restrictions that they were um which were changing often and that led to a great deal of uncertainty and at that point of time we felt that the uh, primary focus that we should be doing is not selling but engaging and empathizing with those consumers so we started by exhibiting a lot more flexibility in terms of our cancellation policies fee changes etc uh, phase two was really about cautiousness and community building uh, where we wanted to celebrate that spirit of resilience that was was there in the community at large and here we pivoted to uh, a lot more urban media pr uh, and community building exercises so one of the first things that we did was actually address the issue of migrant labor who was stuck in their uh, cities and not being able to go to hometowns and did a large number of flights from metro cities back to places uh, like Ranchi, Bhubaneswar, etc., where we had additional capacity which we were deploying. We called that the Umid Ki Udan initiative, which was covered by Discovery and a couple of other uh, networks as well, quite positively. Uh, and then we did two more, which we called the Asia Red Pass. First, uh, for doctors, where we announced 50,000 free seats for doctors and members of the medical services. And then again on Independence Day, um, for members of the armed forces, where we again announced 50,000 free seats for members of the armed forces. So none of these were, were oriented towards selling flights, but they were to say that this is a period where there is a great deal of uncertainty and there is a sense of community that we need to build. Uh, and how do we do that by using what we have spare at this point of time, uh, which is seat capacity. And it's only very recently in the course of the last months that we have now moved into uh, the rejuvenation phase with those younger optimistic consumers with our latest campaign, which is time to travel. Uh, so it remains to be seen, but I, I think the, the trends are and the, the, the tenets that we went back to is to say, let's go back to the basics of, of marketing and follow what the consumer wants to do rather than trying to tell them what they should be doing. Correct. Correct. So great. I think that's a great lesson there, not to lose on the basics, right? The fundamentals remain the same. The median, mediums and the way we connect uh, would have changed and evolved. Uh, so great lesson there. Uh, let me also get some lessons from uh, Nitin on this, right? Nitin, what have been your biggest learnings been? Right. And if you have to give one advice, one line mantra to aspiring marketers, what would it be? Yeah, so uh, just picking up on what uh, Siddharth said, I think uh, for us also it's been a journey of uh, exactly uh, working with customers and prospective customers through the same three stages. How do you survive that first phase where everything is uh, on hold and then you move to recovery and then you move to a transform, transform part, right? And I think a lot of our messaging 
both digital and integrated, has been along the same lines. The survival phase was really about telling customers, don't worry, we've got you covered. Right? And we have pivoted everything that we do to work from home, digital, and we're not letting the ball drop. And a lot of this, in that sense, you think about it, cannot be uh, mass messaging. It has to be personalized. It has to be leadership getting on the phone and talking to somebody else on the other side. It has to be people connecting one to one. While with a broader audience, you can encourage them to say, look, we're doing all well for existing customers. Do you want to get on board too? Uh, the recover and the transform phase has more been about how do we help them in a in a journey where one on one hand R&D budgets are severely constrained. You have to spend on multiple areas, but your uh, your revenues are going to follow later, if at all, right? And uh, therefore, I think this it has been digital for us, but I think it's a lot lot of it has been focused on uh, how do you make sure that we deliver right, we deliver at the lowest cost, and we and we really transform their, their journeys too, right? From a mantra perspective, of course, coming to that, I think I love the one which says, build what a hundred people will love, not a million people will somewhat like. Right? So I'm a core believer in that. In B2B, I would rather go after the hundred than, over a, than after a million. From a B2B perspective, I think that's a great mantra to uh, stick on and abide by. Uh, you know, would love uh, Santosh your one-line mantra for aspiring marketers. What would it be? Well, in my experience in the industry, I have seen agencies, marketeers, others. You know, we we are all very good in making a lot of nice. But uh, I keep telling my team always, this is my favorite. Uh, you know, I say execution is the only strategy customer sees. So uh, if you are able to execute what we show in slides, I think our job is done. All of us uh, in that sense. So and I and the key lies. Uh, uh, you know all the martech or whatever tools we use uh, we are not able to do what the slide says so as long as we are able to execute what we have planned i think we will all do a great job in, uh, in our own areas of uh, expertise so that's all i would like to add in here golden word there execution is the key right uh, key to a lot of things lovely ramakant what would your one line mantra be for aspiring marketers so uh, in, in the era of uh, digital marketing, uh, after my simple mantra is that be experimentative. The platform allows you. And let data be the decision maker for who the winner is. And I'm telling you uh, so often uh, between the, I mean, me and uh, my team, when we discuss and figure out what is it that we should do. And we just say that Look, this is objective. This is your idea, this is my idea. We can try it out. And finally, on a large scale, let's take the one that is, you know, showing early results. So it can really help decision making. I mean, it's not because I'm the boss, uh, but data will, will actually help us take the right decision forward. Correct. So great. So try new things, be experimental, uh, you know, possibly not be afraid to fail, but be afraid not to try. I, I think that's a, that's a great one there. And since you mentioned data and let data be, uh, you know, a driver. Uh, you know, I add one to that because I have one of my own where I say thoda data, thoda dil, right? Where, where where we let data also govern it. But since you mentioned earlier about emotions, how can emotions also be connected to really come up with a comprehensive solution? That's very well put. Great. And Siddhartha, what about you? What is that one line mantra that you go by? Uh, I was actually borrowing from somebody else's mantra. Um, it's, it's a maxim by a cyberpunk author. It says that the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. So if you <laughs> want to look for you know, where the future is or what to do next, then just look for those nuggets of wisdom that are already there. Look for what uh, there's another way of coining it, which says that today's normality is or today's luxury is going to be tomorrow's normality. So look for what those few luxury consumers are consuming and that's going to be ubiquitous tomorrow. Very inspiring Siddhartha. I'm sure everyone is excited now to explore the future, what is around us and to really scale it up to make it the tomorrow. Lovely. I think these 45 minutes have been so informative, so useful. I've been much more rich through this entire discussion and I'm sure our audience has been as well. There have been questions coming, but we are short on time. We'll make sure that we do acknowledge them on social media. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Ramakant, Dartha, Santosh, Nitin, uh, for thank making you. this discussion so, so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
a really interesting discussion. Thank you for your time and sharing your insights. And thank you, Mr. Nakvi, for steering this conversation. Thank you very thank much. You.